welcome, welcome to Saunders Allen Worship Experience. Well, as you can see, we are once again not in our regular sanctuary. Unfortunately, the adversary is being ever busy and has water still flooding into our, uh, our, our space. But that's okay because we are not going to allow it to deter our worship. We're not going to allow it to deter our praise. We are here to get our praise on anyhow, beginning with our call to worship. Dear God, we come to praise and worship you, our creator, who knew us before we were formed. We enter in to this holy ground and our time together here is sacred space. Our different locations don't matter because you are with us in this shared moment of holy time. And so we are ready to hear your voice and open our eyes to see your presence, see your presence in this experience, to see your presence among us, to see your presence in our community and instill in us your heart of compassion and allow us to feel your love, the love of your Holy Spirit come into our hearts and have your way in us and through us so that we may lead this experience of you and reflect your love in our world. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Most holy and everlasting Father, we come to you this morning, Heavenly Father, with grateful hearts, with repentant hearts, Heavenly Father, with joyful hearts. We just thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to come to the throne of grace, this throne of grace, Heavenly Father. As we begin this worship experience, Heavenly Father, we invite your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, into this worship experience, that you inhabit our praises, Heavenly Father. As we receive the word that you have sent of to us, Heavenly Father, we pray that you bless your messenger, that you rain down your grace and your mercy and your anointing upon her, that you crown her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet as we receive what you have for, her, for us to have, Heavenly Father, that will strengthen us the rest of our week and the rest of our lives. It is in the name of Jesus we continue to pray. Amen. 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 The Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. Is there anybody that's glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Come on, put those hands together. Come on, clap them like you really mean it. If you know that there's nobody like our God, I want you to give God a great shout in the house right now. Our Lord, our Lord, you reign. 
there is nobody like our God. Oh, I do thank our MCAM musicians, and that's the Music and Christian Arts um, Ministry of the AME Church, and that was the AME International Mass Choir. And so I am so thankful. We're going to be hearing more from them throughout the worship experience. And that choir is led by none other than our own 4th Episcopal District, Reverend Anthony Vincent and Adrian Dunn. And we've heard from Adrian Dunn before as he brought his choir to us, or not his choir, but his praise team. He has blessed us quite a few times, and so we are thankful. And we want to make sure that we support our own. So both Adrian Dunn and the AME Church International Mass Choir, they have CDs available. So just go out there, type in AME Church International Mass Choir. Their CD will pop up, and I know that you will truly be blessed if you get one of those CDs because it has truly blessed me. And I have to thank our worship team again um, with Reverend Renee, Stuart Pro Tem, Denise, and Stuart Jessica. And I also have to give a shout out to Paul who has created our very own YouTube channel. Yes, y'all, Saunders, Memor Saunders Memorial Allen Temple has a YouTube channel. So all you need to do is go to www dot youtube.com and then in the search icon just put in Saunders Memorial Allen Temple and our channel will pop up click on it and do make sure that you subscribe so that you'll get notices when we send out new information or place new worship experiences or anything on our channel so let's go out there and support and also I am still looking for many of you all to just follow our page I go and scroll through all of our followers and half of our members aren't on there. So come on, y'all. We got like 500 followers. Y'all need to be out there at the very least following our worship experience too. So make sure there's a difference between liking the worship experience and liking the page. So you want to make sure that you do both. Do both. And so that we can go ahead and make sure that you are kept up to date on what is happening with our Facebook post. Amen. Because we really are being intentional and trying to bring you informative information. And so we're coming into August. And August, as we know in Michigan, is annual conference time. And so our annual conference is going to be held on August 19th through the 20th. So mark your calendars and make sure that you're in the place. And it's going to be virtual, so that's an opportunity for everyone to come in and see what goes on at the annual conference. And if I get enough of a heads up, I'll let you know when I'm getting ready to give my pastoral report so that you can at least tune in at that time and see the prayerfully uh, Brother Paul is working diligently as we speak on our um, pastoral report, which is going to be in video form. So uh, you want to see that. So make sure that you mark those dates on your calendar, August 19th through the 20th, and I'll be coming to you later with registration because you are gonna to have to register. It's free, but you still have to register and so that you'll be able to get into the link and watch and participate in the annual conference. But I tell you, I for one am so grateful that that annual conference is going to be virtual. Uh, because Detroit is under 40% vaccinated. That means 60% of our community is at high risk for catching this new Delta variant of COVID-19. And Dr. Fauci says that this variant causes the greatest threat because it is more contagious and it spreads more quickly in the unvaccinated communities. And so at the start of July, the Delta variant made up only 50% of the COVID cases. It now makes up, and we aren't even at the end of July yet, it now makes up 83% of the cases that are causing hospitalization and the deaths. And it's just, we have got to do what we can, y'all, uh, because 90 and 99% of those cases are in people who are unvaccinated. So the vaccines are working for those of us who, who have gotten them. 
But for those who don't, you still, you have got to take the necessary precautions. If you're not gonna get vaccinated, you at least have to get regular testing so that you can make sure if you should pick it up, that you don't pass it on to someone because you might survive it okay, but the next person may not that you pass it on to. So we got to be real diligent about that. And the Connection on AME Church just sent out notification to all of the general conference attendees because of the increased cases in Florida. And I submit to you the reason that Florida is um, ha having such a problem now is because they opened up too early with no restrictions. I can tell you when we were down there, we had to, the AME members, everyone attending the general conference to enter into that space, you had to have on a mask and every day they checked your temperature and gave you a wristband, a new colored wristband, so you couldn't get checked one day and then slide in the next day with that same wristband. You had to have a temperature check every day and they were really diligent about it and would not let you into any space where the conference was being held unless you had it. But still, in Florida, everybody was wide open. So we saw all of these other conventions that were there and they were looking at us crazy because we were walking around in our mask and they were walking around just we were like, mm-hmm, that's okay. But now I feel a whole lot better having come back <laughs> knowing that we had those safety precautions in place. But the second reason I think that they are having this issue is because of the challenge they have made for people to get tested. In Florida, you have to pay for a COVID test. I was amazed. So we had members from Canada and Jamaica who had to get a test in order to get back into their countries. And they were getting quotes for price, prices for COVID testing as high as $250, y'all. $250 to get a test. And see, and this is where we in Detroit are truly, truly blessed because we have COVID tests everywhere. And we're going to be doing our part here at Saunders and Allen to make sure that it is available to the people in our community. And so I'm proud to say that we are living out God's word in Isaiah 58. And on August 7th, we're gonna have our second Fighting COVID in our community event. And we are preparing our part to move beyond our four walls to meet the needs of our community. And the need is great, people. It is great. And it really is a matter of life or death because getting vaccinated and getting tested are critical to our community's health and welfare. So come on, let us do our part because this is gonna be a great community outreach with not only free COVID testing and COVID vaccination, there'll be free health screens, free clothes, free groceries and food, plus free fun and fellowship with a DJ and even a face painter for our young people who actually, and our seniors, because we were out there too, who actually get vaccinated or tested. You'll have free face painting. And so the flyers have been sent to you all. And so if you didn't get one, drop it in the chat or send me a message and we'll be sure to make sure that we do get you one. And please don't just sit on these flyers in your inbox. Use them, spread them, share them, email it to your friends, your family, your neighbors, post it on your Facebook page, or you can just share the link from our Facebook page. But take the flyer to the businesses in your community that you frequent, that you support, and then ask them to support us by allowing you to post the flyer on their window or in their window or on their countertop. And if you happen not to have a color printer, just let us know and we will make sure that we have copies available for you to do just that. And we're also, because we are intentional about getting in our community and helping to meet the needs of our community, we're going to be doing a community canvas with uh, Wayne Health on Thursday and Friday, August 5th and August 6th. And this way, we're going to be able to take it to the people who may not be able to get out, who are homebound. And Wayne Health's mobile van will be rolling through and we're gonna be rolling behind it in our church van with a full health screen, COVID vaccination and testings. And again, that's going to come to you. So again, this is a good time to check in on your elderly neighbors in your community. Find out if they've had a health screen lately, if they need testing, if they need vaccination, and let them know 
that we will come to them. Of course, let us know. We'll need to have the address and everything so that we can make sure that we get them on our schedule. But we want to be out in the community, being intentional, doing our part to help fight this COVID in our community and to let the community know that we aren't just trying to sit up in the four walls, that we are doing the work that God has commissioned us to do and that we are bringing the health services to them. Because serving the needs of our community and those less fortunate is what really, what God really desires of his church. So I'm looking for every single one of our members to do their part, to give God their best as we worship God through our ministry to God's people. Amen. Amen. And so now we're going to have uh, Stuart Pro Tem Denise come and lift up our giving and prayer. Good morning, everybody. It's such a blessing to be here. This is our giving time. We'd like to be very happy and thankful for our faithful givers, our committed givers, and for our friends. I'd also like to say that this is time for us to pay our budget, which is 125. Excuse me, 150. Um, you can give it through Givelify. You can bring it up to the church. You can call us. We'll come and get it. Thank you very, very, very much. Um, at this time, we'd like to also um, say prayers for our sick and our shut-in. We'd like to give a special heart feel we're sorry for Bishop McKenzie and the loss of her husband Stan McKenzie in prayer Father we come to you with thanksgiving in our hearts for everything that you have provided us with we thank you for providing us with health and with wealth and with thanksgiving and with understanding Father, we ask that you go by and you bring only the comfort that you can bring to the families that need comfort in the loss of their loved ones. Father, go by and touch the hospitals, touch the frontline workers. Father, touch everyone that's just involved in making everything better. Father, we know that you come and that you use us in a special way. So we ask that you just come and use us. Father, we thank you for everything that you've done. Father, go by and touch again in the hospitals, the nursing homes. Father, touch those in the personal homes, but help us in America not to just be selfish with ourselves because there are those in other countries that are really suffering much, much more than we are. So Father, go by and let them feel your hand of comfort. Let them know that you are there. Let them know that there are people in other countries and other places praying for them that you come and that you touch and that you provide them with everything that they need. Father, these are times when we need to know that you are there. We can feel you, Father. We thank you for everything. We love you. Hallelujah and amen. amen. Come on, Zion, put those hands together. Put those hands together. If you got hands, I wanna see you clapping. Glory and honor and praise be to the Lord.
glory and honor are due our God. Again, I want to thank the AME Mass International Choir for blessing us. And yes, go out there and get that CD. Amen. Amen. Well, as you know, we have been tarrying with Isaiah 58. And I'm going to lift up today the 11th through the 14th chapter from the New Revised Standard Version. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up, raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests or pursuit, pursuing your own affairs, if you do this, then you shall take delight in the Lord and I, God, will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I, God, will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. I want to speak briefly today on the topic, are we yet alive? Won't you bow with me in prayer? Dearest and most merciful God, I stand before your people, an humble servant charged with bringing forth a word from you. I have been meditating in your midst, Lord, and so I ask now that as I bring forth what has been poured in, that you will open the hearts and the minds of your people to receive it and to digest it, understand it, grasp it, and to be able to walk in the fullness of it, walking in closer relationship with you, having a greater understanding of that which you desire. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Are we yet alive? As many of you know, the 51st Quadrennial Conference of the AME Church was just held in Orlando, Florida. And I am proud to say that I was elected by the 4th Episcopal District Delegation to serve as a delegate to the General Board. And the General Board is that body that's responsible for handling the business of the church between quadrennial conferences. And so I am truly, truly honored to be able to serve. I mean, as AMEs, we have much to be proud of from the wonderful music we've heard today to our rich, rich legacy of social justice, a legacy upon which the AME Church was formed and built. Our very existence derives from our founder, Bishop Richard Allen's fight for social justice and his refusal to be oppressed and denied the basic privilege of kneeling at an altar for prayer. And so social justice is so integral to the existence of the AME Church that it is embedded in our AME mission statement, which tells us we are to minister to the social, the spiritual, and the physical development of all people. It is this legacy that has produced leaders, not just in the church, but in society at large, serving in the state houses and the U.S. Capitol, serving in our halls of justice. Yes, the AME church legacy is rich. Now, the, the, the staunch lifelong AMEs are familiar with the title of my message and with the hymn after which it was titled and are we yet alive and are we yet alive is an anthem of the ame church the ame historiographer reverend dr Teresa fry brown shares that it was written by charles and john wesley in 1749 and in 1801 bishop richard allen selected this song as the final hymn in the groundbreaking hymnal that first was first published for black or the first hymnal published for black congregations. 
And so Are We Yet Alive is sung at the opening of practically every annual conference and even every quadrennial, including our 51st quadrennial. And you heard it, if you got to church on time today, you heard it at the beginning of our worship experience. And see, and of course, the answer to And Are We Yet Alive is supposed to be a resounding yes, yes, we are yet alive. We are alive and thriving to continue the legacy of our founder. We are alive to continue building on all that the AME Church has achieved since 1816. We've built schools to educate our people. We fought for the right to vote and now continue to fight to preserve our right to vote. Our very own Bishop Reginald Jackson of the 6th Episcopal District is now suing the state of Georgia to prohibit the implementation of the oppressive voting right bill that its legislature just passed in an attempt to suppress our vote <laughs> that turned their state blue. Yes, and we've built hospitals, orphanages, and schools in Africa and Haiti, all around the world. AMEs continue to serve our country and our world in a myriad of ways. Yes, our 51st quadrennial opened with And We Are Alive, and yet, and are we yet alive? It opened with that hymn. But I have to say, I left this general que conference questioning, are we yet alive? I left wondering, can the AME church remain viable and relevant? I left wondering, will the AME church be around to celebrate another 200 years? I left wondering, is the AME church yet alive? Are we yet alive when our bishops I'm not given the common courtesy and dignity of being informed of what Episcopal district they're being sent to until it is read on the floor of the conference. Now, there are some who would say, well, that's what the bishops do to the pastors. Well, not all bishops do that. And I, I can attest our bishop doesn't do it. Our prior bishop didn't do it. They have, they have respect for the individual pastors and they gave notice. They let them know. It wasn't just read to them on the floor of the conference. Plus, two wrongs do not make a right. And this is not, again, the practice of all bishops. Nevertheless, are we yet alive when it is deemed acceptable to treat a fellow Christian or anybody with so little regard and respect? Are we yet alive when we spend millions of dollars to send delegates to vote on matters affecting the church and then treat the delegates as though they are mindless and incapable of making an informed decision? So they simply need to vote the way the bishop tells them to vote. And worse yet, most, blind, most delegates blindly do just that. And we, so we could save millions and just let the bishops decide. So what is the point of the rules? Are we let up yet alive when we allow ourselves to engage in voter suppression right within our own Zion? And are we yet alive when candidates for bishop and general officers of the church are elected not based on their gifts, their fruits, and their character, but rather upon the deals brokered in the back room by the bishops to meet their own agendas and self-interest? Are we yet alive when we closely resemble the behavior of a political party who supported a man totally lacking in gifts and character simply because it got them the power, position, and clout they wanted? Are we yet alive when the majority of our churches have decreasing membership, tithes, offerings, and resources that prevent them from caring for the church property that they have? As a result, many of our churches are congregating in buildings that are literally crumbling and falling apart around them. Buildings, I might add, that are owned by the Connectional Church and not the local church. So are we yet alive when the Connectional Church is the equivalent of a slum landlord charging rent in the form of assessments but refusing to put any money back into the property that they own? Are we yet alive? When the Connectional Church sets aside $3 million in investments that we can't touch for seven years because of the investment that they put in, put it in, 
while we have churches struggling to survive because of the yoke placed upon them. Are we yet alive when $3 million is set aside while the budget that must be paid by the struggling churches is increased? Are we yet alive when a church founded on the principle of social justice fails to exercise social justice within its own realm? Are we yet alive when in 200 years and 142 bishops, we have just elected only the fifth female bishop, and we currently have only two female bishops out of the now 23 bishops on the bench, and only one female general officer? Are we yet alive when 80% of the church is female, but only 20% of the general board is female? <laughs> And I am only the second female clergy elected to the general board from the fourth Episcopal district in the history of the church. Are we yet alive when God has shown his disappointment by allowing the doors of the church buildings to be shuttered during this pandemic? And still we have churches that are more focused on returning into the four walls for business as usual rather than focusing on how to obey the commandment of God to look out for the least of these. In sum, my question is, are we yet alive when in the words of the prophet Isaiah, we simply look out for self first, going our own way, serving our own interests and pursuing our own affairs? Are we yet alive? Well, I wish I could give a resounding yes to that question. And while I cannot, what I do know is that there is still a God. And yes, as we opened our worship, there is no God like our God. And as we see in our text, we are not the first to go astray from God's intended purpose. But thanks be to God for giving us Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, and his words in the 58th chapter, because they serve as a roadmap for our return to God. See, God says we just simply need to take off the yoke that we place on each other and even on ourselves and stop focusing insularly on those of us who used to be and are clamoring to be back within the walls. This church thing is not about us. True to our AME legacy and the words of Isaiah, we must focus on satisfying the needs of the afflicted and the needs of the afflicted are many. So we can no longer afford to focus on our own self-interest and affairs because that is what's gotten our connectional church, our local church, our communities and our personal lives in the shape that they are in today. We have lost our true sense of community, our ability to have, to love Jesus as Jesus loved. And Jesus just didn't just sit inside a building waiting for people to come to him to, so he could show them love. No, Jesus was out and about in the community, seeing the need and then addressing the need. So let us focus on serving the needs of our community and not ourselves. Let us focus on doing this so that God will allow us to ride up high upon the heights of the earth. Let us obey God who will then guide us continually to where he is working so that we can join with God in the work. And as we satisfy the needs of the afflicted, God will satisfy our needs in all the parched places. God will make us like a spring of water that never fails. If we simply surrender to Christ, love as God commands us to love, love as God loves us, and then obey as God requires, God will raise up the foundations on which our beloved AME legacy stands, and it will be raised up for many more generations to come. And the ancient ruins upon which we see around us, they will be rebuilt. And we will then be able to be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of our streets, the restorer of our community. Yeah, the opening sermon of the General Conference was preached by Bishop Batch Ty McKenzie. 
And I have to say, it kept me throughout the entire conference. Because in it, she raised the question, what could the AME church look like if God had his way? And she then encouraged us to claim that reality and to understand the difference between what the church is today and what our beloved Zion could be tomorrow. So are we yet alive? Well, we certainly can be. And if we surrender to God, we shall be. And the legacy of Richard Allen will live on for generations and generations to come. So let us rise up and do what is necessary so that when that great song is sung, and are we yet alive, we can say with a resounding yes, yes, we are yet alive because we have surrendered to God and we are doing what God desires of us. God bless you. Well, the doors of the church are open. And the question you want to ask yourself personally, are you yet alive? Are you doing what God desires of you? Are you walking in the path that God has for you? Are you living the life of love that God has ordained for you? And if you are not, and you are not because you have just simply never invited Christ into your life, I extend to you an invitation now to come and join the community of believers, to welcome, to usher God into your heart, allow him to have control, allow him to guide and direct your life. But it begins with first confessing Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if you've never done that, I extend to you an invitation now. And see, and I want to usher you in personally myself because I could just say, well, just say these words and it's done. But I believe that it's a public confession that needs to be made in the presence of others. And so I want you, if you have never confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, drop it in the chat, email me, drop it in a message on our YouTube channel, text me, whatever, however you need to reach me, reach me. And I will definitely call you to pray the prayer of salvation with you. It would be my great joy to usher you in to God's kingdom. But maybe you have already accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but somehow you just don't have a church home where you're able to work out your soul's salvation. Well, we will welcome you here at Saunders Allen a church that is on the move, a church that is endeavoring to be in the community, a church that is striving to live out the principles of Isaiah 58, serving the afflicted, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and just doing our part to improve the community in which we sit. And so we would love to have you come join with us in that journey. Like, as I always say, we don't profess to know everything or have everything all figured out. But what we do know is that we're keeping our eye on Christ and that we are endeavoring to journey with him where he is and where he is working so that we can join with him and then receive the blessings that this word promises to us. So two opportunities. If you've never confessed Jesus Christ, drop it in the chat. Or if you want to join our community of faith here at Saunders Allen, drop it in the chat, email me or text me. And on both accords, I will contact you to either pray the prayer of salvation or to welcome you into our community of faith here at Saunders and Allen. It would be my great joy to do that this week. So don't hesitate. Don't let anybody talk you out of it. Don't let yourself talk yourself out of it. But just go ahead and step out and take that step as God is directing you. God bless you. Well, we come to the close of another worship experience. And again, like I said, the adversary has been busy trying to keep us out of our, our worship, our regular worship space in the church. 
But we are going on and we're going to praise God anyhow. So we don't know where we'll be coming to you from next week, but we know we will be coming from to you. And we know that we will be praising God then as we will all through this week. So just make sure you stay tuned. Again, go out there, follow our Facebook page, follow our YouTube channel so that you're aware when we are coming out to give praise and worship unto God. And so with that, I leave you with my prayer for you this week, or my prayer for us. And my prayer is this, that we will focus not on our own self-interest, but on serving the needs of our community. I pray that we will surrender to Christ, love as God commands us, and obey as God requires. I pray that as we do outreach to satisfy the needs of the afflicted in our community, that God will satisfy our needs in all of the parched places of our lives, individually and collectively as a body of faith. And I pray that God will make us like a spring of water that never fails. And I pray that the ruins of our community will be rebuilt. I pray that we will become known as the repairers of the breach and the restorer of our streets and our communities and even our lives. That is my prayer for you this week. God bless you and we will see you next week. Have a blessed one.